Shungvula has just popped his head up again now. I don't know where Shungile is. I still can't see her. Can you see her, Seb? Yeah, Saw she went that way behind, sort of towards yeah, that buffalo thorn. Right, but, but I, can't, I can only see her if I get up. So Seb's yeah. saying you can only see her if he gets up. You can't see her with the camera, but she's just off to our right hand side at the moment. Now, hopefully, Mvula's going to wake up now. Come on, boy. What would motivate this whole situation would be if hyenas arrived and I was saying earlier with the growling and the sort of hissing and the chuffing that now's the time of day that hyenas are going to start walking around. They're going to start leaving <laughs> and she's actually sneaking off now. So you can see her just slinking off and sitting again. A little bit of chuffing again. I wonder if she's losing patience a little bit now. Nope. Back down. And still glaring up, hoping for the best. I'm sorry, my girl, that you haven't had to finish your meal. And it's just her luck, really. I mean, it's this area, we haven't seen Mvula in this area for months. I actually can't remember the last time there was a sighting of Mvula where we are now. And so, I haven't even tracked him in this area. And it would be, really, it's a travesty that she's managed to catch something and now he's arrived at the point that she's done. And it's probably because of his proximity to where he was now look she's coming in and you can hear him growling so let's just see and what plays out here again i wonder if she's going to be brave enough to come closer shame my girl are you hungry so she's just behind us so i apologize if there's a sort of aerial in the way every now and then listen to him so interesting because every time he growls she growls back are you upset my girl <laughs> of course he doesn't really care too much but she's definitely not enjoying the fact that he's lying right there and isn't that a fantastic picture when he looks up like that it's just something about a leopard looking up I don't know why Seb was also saying the same thing, and particularly in still photography, when you get those leopards looking up into the sky, it's just you get that whole eye area, and it's just something quite incredible about it. In fact, one of my favorite leopard or favorite photos of a leopard is in Vula, and he, it was this one where he was looking up like that, and you can actually see the curvature of his eye in the photo, and it's just quite amazing to be able to watch them kind of that closely and to see that detail in the eye. No, everything's settled down again. Little Shungile's got her eyes sort of closing and she's lying just behind the car here. You can see there she is, just over the back end. Still watching him. Let's see if she'll growl back because he's growling again. She's quiet now. So he growls every now and then when she looks at him. Look at the tail. There we go. And where have we seen that face before? So we've seen that face before on her mother. I mean, she makes those same sort of growling sounds and shows her teeth and sort of gives herself that confidence to chase away the male. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So Deborah, you're wondering if it's a life-threatening scenario playing out for Shungile. Well, no, not really. Mvula's just warning her not to come near the carcass because he wants the meat. He's not actually interested in her, and there we go. Let's see if he'll come up now. He might come up into the tree itself. Now, I might take an illegal photo if he does, just because of our proximity to where we are. But he's not going to be threatening her. You can see when he gets up to move, so she moves as well. So she's going to basically give way to him and not worry about him too much at all I see he's just kind of come to where it is she's moved off a little bit and he's looking up S sent his message now to her to say that's it this is my tree and I wonder is he gonna go up for us Seb if he does Walk it's <coughs> look he's scraping over the stomach content 
coming to rest right here next to us, big boy. I think he might go up. You see, he's looking. That is about as close as it gets when it comes to a male leopard, that's for sure. I think he might lie down here. It looks as though his back legs are slowly starting to go down, so I think he might decide just to lie here. I think he was more just warding. Oh, no, we're going to pee. Hmm. And you can see, look, he's not scraping his back legs. Now that's an indication of a male leopard that is no longer the dominant male, because the dominant male would have scraped his back feet while peeing. And this is a way that you would see a young male leopard scent mark, or even a female leopard. Now let's see, is he going? He might. How cool is that? That is so cool. <laughs> that is about as epic as it gets. It's exactly what I wanted. I was hoping it was going to jump and it almost looked as though he was jumping from us up to the tree. So well done, Seb. That's very cool. Oh, don't fall out now. <laughs> but that was so awesome. We were perfect for that. It would have been nice if the vehicle wasn't behind, but that was still very, very cool indeed. Nice one, Seb. Well done. So that was what we were hoping for when he went up, is that he was going to go up right next to us and we'd end up with a situation where he was nice and close. So, so Seb's, Seb's saying that it's his first time to film a leopard going up a tree as close as what he's just filmed this one. So there we go, Seb. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm happy to have been a part of that for you. But I can tell you that that leopard was no more than I would say... Oh, how many feet do you say, Seb? close <laughs> would be my five? five meters not even and he was right here and look at him trying to balance up there in the tree it's absolutely amazing to watch him as he tries to move around and tries to kind of figure out what he's actually doing and I think the tree itself the reason why he's battling so much So, Karen, you're saying it must be much harder coming down. Well, this morning we watched him come down, and, well, yes, it wasn't very pretty when he came down this morning. He actually ended up kind of plopping onto the ground more than actually lying on it. Well, I'm um, coming down gracefully. Also, with a big male like this, he's heavy on the front end. Remember, his shoulders and his neck are very big, and so he probably, in all likelihood, just came down because speed got the end of him. It's a very, very tall tree that he's in. You can see the size of him in comparison to the tree. And are you just doing a bit of pruning so that you can get up better? Look, he's breaking branches off. Be careful, those are thorny. What are you doing? So, ah, oh, Laura Moore, you must, you're saying that Shongile must be rolling her eyes. Shame. She, I'm sure. She's actually gone off to the back there. She's behind that other vehicle. And she doesn't seem too worried about things. Ting, well, Mbule in the meantime is just having a good old prune of the tree. He keeps breaking branches. And I wonder if it's because it's quite difficult to get where he wants to go and lie. He wants to lie probably on this tree that his bum is on at the moment. It kind of bends out and flattens. And that was the tree, the branch that he was on this morning. So maybe he's just getting rid of some of those spiky branches so that he can get past. But you can see he's actually got his back legs resting on that branch. So even though it looks like he's standing, he's actually sitting. Cat, you wonder if leopards ever get tired of climbing trees? Well, if they've got any genetics like James Hendry, then no, because we know James Hendry loves to get up into a tree, as does our boy Mbula. So I think they know that it's just a point of safety and food can hang there, and so it's probably a saving grace. But I suppose some days you just probably don't feel like it, and they see hyena coming and they have to get up. It must be pretty irritating to do. So I would imagine there is a bit of that, but... For the most part, I'm sure leopards are very thankful that they can climb trees unlike the rest of them. Where are you going to go from here? What is quite nice is you can actually see a nice size difference between the front and back paw when he sits like this. So if you have a look at his front paw that's on the branch there, it's very, very large and broad and wide. Whereas the back paw, you see, a little bit narrower and we always talk about the male leopard versus female leopard tracks. The female leopard has a very similar back pad to what a male leopard does. It's a lot more elongated, 
whereas the front pad on that male you can see is quite rounded here's the back side of his paw there and so you can see the size difference between the two and that's why we also know back and front but from female and male a little bit more rounder on the males and a little bit more bulky than what the females have but very big difference between front and back was that a lot of effort getting up there boy I suppose when you get a little bit older, climbing trees becomes a lot harder, so that must have been. He didn't exactly shoot up that tree, did he? It was quite a slow climb, which is very cool for us, but... Wow, that was special. Having a leopard display that kind of power right next to us is something unbelievable. Just to hear the claws getting into the branch and then him pulling himself up. So, Lisa, you're asking if I've ever seen a leopard fall. Yes, I have. I've seen quite a few leopards, actually, mostly when carrying carcasses. So when they take a carcass, if the carcass just falls slightly and the weight shifts a little bit, it ends up then the leopard comes flying out of the tree with the carcass and lands in a heap. And there was a video going around the other day of Anderson falling out of a big tree with an impala carcass. I think it was Londa Losey that posted it. And so it does happen from time to time also if leopards fight i've seen leopards falling out of trees fighting with one another so i've actually seen funny enough tiani and, and salahesh even though they're mom and daughter having a little go and tiani falling So, Bobby, you're wondering if leopards fall, do they land on their feet like a house cat? Well, yes, they do. Sometimes they land, though, in a bit of a funny way that their tail gets caught in underneath their feet and they can break their tail. And there's a few leopards that I've actually seen with broken tails, and it's generally because of that. But they do land on their feet and then they scamper away when they fall out. It's only if, even if they get sort of thrown out and they're at an awkward angle, they tend to actually land on their feet and then able to move from there. So just like a house cat in the same regard. Back to pruning. That can't be comfortable in Vula. Those are spiky, spiky thorns. Well, I suppose... <coughs> are you happy with yourself? Hmm? Yeah, it's nothing like pruning the garden when you're in your home. It's strange thinking he's got a meat carcass right there, but he's messing around with a thorn tree instead. You silly boy. I think he's just trying to actually catch his breath from going up this tree. You can see he's panting quite heavily, which is an indication of him being a little bit tired and a bit warm. And he didn't have the biggest belly I've ever seen, but it definitely is quite full. So going up the tree has probably been a bit of hard work, and now he's just panting away, catching his breath before he starts to shift and move. Be careful, that branch is not very big. What are you doing? Oh, look at that light on him as well. Isn't that fantastic? Oh... That is good. Oh, through the thorns we go to his resting place that he likes. There we go. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he turns around, much like what we saw this morning, and then plonks himself down in the same fashion as he was this morning. Now, the interesting thing is he is literally right above us. In fact, if he had to fall, hopefully he doesn't, but he would pretty much fall on our heads. So I'm not going to move just yet. I'll wait for him to settle down. And hopefully he will stop dropping branches because I don't really feel like a knob thorn to the forehead at this point in time. What are you doing, Imvula? He's actually sniffing. And I wonder if that's not where Shongile was lying at some point with this carcass during the night. See how he's taking big, deep breaths? And I wonder if he's going to phlegm and grimace. No. He's sniffing all the time. This is amazing. Now hopefully he doesn't pee as well, because we're also going to be in trouble if he decides to pee. <laughs> Seb, do you have your raincoat with you? <laughs> wow. Not every day that you get something like this. So Kylie, you say he's playing King of the Hill? Well, yes, Kylie, he most definitely is, although I would say king of the castle, more like, and hopefully he decides not to sort of send a message to those inferior people below, because if he does, like I say, we're in direct firing line. And it's something, un to see the underside of a leopard's chin is not very common at all. You generally don't see that very much, and we're having a perfect view of it. Oh, are you going to park right there with this light? Oh, that is as good as it gets.
So Eden Six and Ellie, who's four years old, all the way from Canada. Hello. I hope you're having a nice day or night. It would be night by the time you're watching this. And you want to know if I'm not scared if the leopards will attack me. Well, I not really know because this leopard that you see above me right now is a leopard that's been in this area for many, many years and it's become used to the vehicles and it knows the vehicles are not dangerous. It knows that the vehicles aren't going to attack it and hurt it and try and kill it and that's why it doesn't mind us being here. And so I don't worry about them too much. And the other little female, she's still very small and so she's a bit nervous of a big vehicle like this and she won't really come and try and attack us. And you've got to be a little nervous of leopards that don't know vehicles because they will be a little bit more sort of wary of us and they might try and attack so we'd have to be nervous of them but these two leopards know I'm quite comfortable with them and I'm pretty happy that they're this close because it's just the most amazing sighting and it's making me very happy to be near them look at how gold his coat is in this afternoon light isn't this cool right so from one big cat lounging in the bowels of a knobthorn to Scott Dyson, who's not a big cat, in the Masai Mara with a beautiful male lion lounging in the grass. As you can see, not much has changed here, but what is interesting